Hi guys, my name is Stavros. I'm the author of the Toma 6, book one of the Fateful Force, and I'm also a Warbow Archer. Now, today I'm going to do the chrono test for my MR Tiron. So those that have seen uh, my previous video, what I did do on that video was I unpacked the bow, I strung it up, I did the first draw, and then I also weighed it. And the bow weighed in at about 110 pounds at 28 inches. So uh, I'm going to use the same weight arrows as I did for my H1 Heavy Draw, the 1177 to 1180 grain arrow, and the 1293 grain arrow, and then I'll put a slightly heavier arrow on it to see how we go and how it compares to that H1 Heavy Draw. 1177 grain arrow. 162 feet per second, 1,177 grain arrow, 162 feet per second, 1,180 grain arrow, 160 feet per second, 1,180 grain arrow again, 160 feet per second, 1,293 grain arrow. 157 feet per second, 1,293 grain arrow. 159 feet per second, that's a little bit faster. 1,293 grain arrow. 157 feet per second, 1,293 grain arrow. 160 feet per second. So it's a little bit faster than the H1 heavy draw at 107 pounds. Okay, so we saw the results. Uh, the bow is a little bit faster than the H1 heavy draw, but it's also 10 times the price. price. And I've been saying this for a long time now. Uh, value for money, war bows, the H1 heavy draw is, you know, unbeatable up to that 110 pounds, 115 pound draw weight. Um, and listen, it doesn't mean that, you know, MR bow is not worth getting. Uh, it's just a simple matter of, you know, it's a beautiful bow. If you want that type of bow, the aesthetics, the draw experience, uh, you know, that, that kind of those facets of the bow, then it's definitely a great bow to get. Um, it is a good bow though. It is my fastest bow, so I'm going to keep using it. And what's important about this bow is we can look at the data is that off the bow, it's producing about the same amount of energy as Joe Gibbs's 160 pound bow at 50 to 60 yards. And this is actually quite significant. This is actually really, really good. So for those that uh, have seen that video where Todd tests his uh, lockdown long bow with Joe Gibbs's 160 pound bow, um, you can see that at that 50 to 60 yard mark, the bow's carrying about 98 to 100 joules of uh, energy, the uh, actual, the 160 pound U war bow. And that is a more realistic engagement range uh, for you know historical warfare. So when we do our armor tests, we're always firing at about 10 yards range. We're not losing any energy off the bows, but what we now have is a bow that's gonna simulate a 160 pound bow at that, we'll call it optimal engagement range. Now, I don't have many period sources from Europe that talks about you know engagement ranges, but the common consensus is that somewhere between 30 and 100 yards is your flat shooting optimal range, but certainly they were firing out to 200 and plus yards uh, because the boats could reach out there. But if you want to extract maximum energy out of your bow and flat shoot so the arrows hit armor at a as 90 degree possible angle, that's gonna be the most efficient type of range for war bow firing. We do know from the uh, 16th century uh, unification wars in Japan, we do have some texts that talk about Japanese archery. Now, Nobunaga during the uh, unification wars, he integrated archers in with arquebusiers. Arquebusiers came from Portugal and they were new to Japan and he integrated them into his army. And they had a doctrine of the archers filling in the gaps of the reload times or these slow reload times of the arquebusiers, but also the doctrine from what I remember reading or hearing, and um, I can't remember where it was from now, I'll try and uh, get the source and put it up on the screen so you can see it, was that the arquebuses were to open fire beyond 50 yards and the archers were to start loosing the arrows at that 50 yard range and continuously loose their arrows into the enemies uh, at that relatively moderate range or close to moderate range. Once combat was to begin, manuals recommended that gunners should start shooting at 110 meters while archers loosed at 55 meters. So 
I feel that that 50 yard range is a nice medium between the 30 and 100 yards where I would think would be the optimal range for archers. You know, anything beyond, uh, uh, less than 30 uh, yards, certainly you can fire at two meters if you want to, but you're gonna be very close to melee combats. So you're either gonna be looking to abandon your bow, pull out your you know, sidearms, which we know the English archers at least did that at Agincourt, uh, they joined the melee, or they're gonna retreat behind their lines so that they don't get engaged uh, by melee troops. So I feel that this bow, even though I'm a little bit disappointed that it's not as fast as I thought it would be, uh, but as it stands right now, it is producing the same amount of energy as a 160 pound U war bow at that 50 to 60 yard range, which is a very nice engagement range. And we can use that as our proxy for our armor tests when we use this bow to say, this is what this bow will do with these arrows against this type of armor. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did like this video, please like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned for our next video.